I have five tips that looking back on my time in the Carmelite monastery with the sisters that I felt would be of use to other people who are discerning this call, following Jesus into monastic life. The first for me would be patience with yourself because it's such a huge change going from life in the world with our phones and our social media and our friends and everything we can do that we can control to a life where you don't have the control, where there's a hierarchy in the sisters, the, the order of the day is completely different. You're away from everything, you're away from your family. It's, it's a huge, huge, huge change. So it really does require us to be patient and gentle with ourselves. Transformation is, is huge on a spiritual path. So it's not something that we can take lightly. So I would just say if these are the first steps you're taking, you're going to enter, or even if you're aspiring, be aware that that is needed within you, that you don't, you know, we don't leave the world and, and go into a different life and just be fine with it overnight. It takes a long time. It really does. A sense of humour is always a good one. You see that a lot on, on Facebook comments or, you know, YouTube and various other spiritual for, forums that that nuns are, you know, always happy and bouncing around. <laughs> that is true to some extent, but there are also, believe me, difficult days behind the scenes that you don't get to see on these vocation videos where things are actually very tough, very uncomfortable, and you're all working to try to bring the light and, and heal and make every day go smoothly. Because the days are so long, you know, usually we're up at half past five and you don't stop until half past nine, sometimes 10 o'clock at night, you have a later Compline, the evening evening service. So it's it's basically being able to ride each day and do things with a smile. That's the important thing. Sometimes you wake up and the last thing you want to do is smile. You know, you might be going through a particularly tough time, but you, the, the idea is that you, you try to be aware and be mindful that the life in the monastery doesn't revolve around you. You're living with 20 or so other women, maybe a smaller community. And it's just being, being mindful that you, they're, they're also making the effort for you. So you have to make the effort for them. And if something goes wrong, be able to laugh it off. Oh, it's okay, it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. Smile, move on to the next thing. So yeah, the sense of humor. I relax a lot more into my first few weeks. And then at recreation, I was actually being quite silly. I was asking if I could play the piano and sing and make everybody laugh. And, and I was just finding my own, my own way. You know, how, how can I, how can I bring my sense of humor to the, to the community and watching how the other sisters did that as well and obviously they'd all been they've all been living together for so many years already before I entered so there are just ways that that things are done and you adapt so smiling sense of humor being able to being able to laugh things off definitely accepting others as well is a big one in there. A lot of the sisters in my community, they were from different cultures, different backgrounds, spoke different languages. And you, you don't always, you know, personalities, even in this, even in this world, we can, we can clash. There are certain people you think, oh, actually, I don't think I'd be friends with them normally. But in a monastery, well, there's no choice because you have to live with them. You have to live with them. So again, adapting, patient, <laughs> smile, because it's, it's inevitable that there will be, there will be clashes of, of personalities and there'll be arguments. And fortunately for me, I didn't actually witness much of that at all. Our, our community were very, very mindful of, of the other, the other sister and trying to be, trying to be, okay, if I'm going to have a bad mood, I'm going to just take a walk and scream in the forest instead. And that'll be the way I deal with it. Not take it out on another sister. Do you know what I mean? So you're always watching and you're always you're always careful being from different backgrounds we can't all go in there expecting our way of doing things to be the accepted way you have to adapt so we had this thing where um it was it was it was funny um in the refectory when we were having food there was 
you couldn't to butter some bread you couldn't put your knife you couldn't put the knife into the butter and then scrape it on the bread you had to put the knife into the butter put a little bit of butter on the side of the plate and then go back to your table and then deal deal with it and I remember going in my I think my first or second breakfast there I got the butter knife and I went straight into the pat of butter and I buttered the toast and I went back to my table and then later that afternoon my novice mistress said we wouldn't normally put the knife straight in and I was like wow you know it even comes down to methods of how how we're all eating and what we're all doing in these rituals in in the kitchen um so you're you know you're in there thinking it's going to be about your spiritual path and 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 your relationship with God and your prayer life and it's actually watching what you're doing with the butter knife and watching how you're making the tea and you know it there is so much and that's that's really where the sense of humor kicked in because at first I thought she was kidding and she wasn't and I was like oh, oh, oh right yeah okay sorry um and then you're really self-conscious of what you're doing you know because you're thinking that the prioress is going to come down on you like a ton of bricks if you make a mistake but but it's all done very lovingly very very lovingly so just be be mindful that you can't just waltz in and do your own thing you know there will be there will be things that you'll be pulled up on and you just have to accept very gently and very humbly and try to take on as much of their the way of the community as possible losing the ego we could bring me on to that actually renouncing the ego putting it on the back seat because again you're not in there being the shining light and every single sister is seen as equal in the eyes of Jesus we all bring our own gifts into the community which is brilliant and everybody was different and that's how the community works you're all bouncing off each other but it isn't about you and that's that's the thing you you have to realize that you're not going to be paid compliments every day and you're not going to be you know it, it's just not it doesn't work like that so you have to be you have to be aware that you're you're one of the you're one of the sisters in the entire group you're all working towards the same goal which is the daily prayer the love of god to be witnessing for the kingdom to get up every day as as fresh as you can making the effort to live to live the day to be present at the divine office, to be present for the other sisters. You know, it, it's, it, I'm making it sound like it's terribly hard work, but I have to tell you it is. It is difficult. And that doesn't mean that it's difficult all day, every day. It's just, you know, you will have moments where you think, wow, I'm tired. And, oh gosh, I wasn't, you know, that sister, oh dear, we didn't agree on this. And, you know, things can, things can get to you, but the day goes on. Number five, I would say just absolutely go for it. You know, I know for me, looking back, if I hadn't done that time as a postulant, I wouldn't be doing this now, talking to you all, sharing this, sharing this vocation, sharing the importance of, of a relationship with God. I don't value anything as highly as that. I think that is my, my treasure, if you like, that, that my relationship with Jesus fuels every other relationship I have in my life. God is is at my center and even though I'm not praying 24 hours a day <laughs> because I don't I don't believe that that's quite where it's at you don't have to be going at it all the time to be like I love God and I'm banging all the time it's just not you know in your own way be with Jesus be with the Holy Spirit enjoy your time at, at church have your quiet time when you can it, it doesn't have to be a full-on relationship for you to feel like Jesus loves you and and you you love him if you work hard now and you do the prayer and you commit to the life and you give it your all, you'll have so much clarity later on. And that's what happened. I got to February and I was like, it is crystal clear that I don't belong here. There were no wavering ifs, buts. I didn't leave and then ring them two weeks later and go, I miss all of you. We need to come. You know, it just wasn't there. I did miss them, but I knew that Jesus did not want me in a cloistered environment, but he I had to be in there for him to tell me that. It really is a very sacred, important way of living. It wasn't for me in the end, but I don't knock it. I don't disrespect it. It really is beautiful. It's saying to people, you know, the Lord, the Lord exists. It is prayer is important. Vocation is important. Jesus is important. We know that. So really absolutely go for it. Be brave. 
patience, sense of humour, acceptance of others, put the ego on the back seat and enjoy.